T-pole ground fault circuit interrupter breaker can indeed be used for a 3-wire 208 volts receptacle, even without a neutral connection. Here's how it works. The primary function of a two-pole ground fault circuit interrupter breaker is to interrupt both hot conductors in the event of a ground fault. Each hot conductor connects to a separate pole on the breaker. Since there is no neutral conductor in this configuration, the ground fault circuit interrupter breaker uses the ground conductor to perform its voltage sensing function. Let's walk through the wiring process. Firstly, connect the two hot conductors to the designated hot terminals on the two-pole ground fault circuit interrupter breaker. Secondly, connect the ground conductor to the ground terminal on the breaker. Thirdly, and importantly, leave the white or neutral conductor disconnected because it is not used in this particular setup. Now let's delve into the explanation of how this arrangement ensures safety. When there isn't a ground fault, the voltage on both hot conductors, when measured relative to the ground, should have the same magnitude but opposite polarity. This balance in voltage means the ground fault circuit interrupter breaker will not trip because it perceives no fault. However, if a ground fault occurs, the voltage on the hot conductor that has the fault will drop relative to the ground. This creates an imbalance in voltage, which is detected by the ground fault circuit interrupter breaker. Upon detecting this imbalance, the breaker trips, effectively interrupting the circuit and preventing potential harm. This method of using a two-pole ground fault circuit interrupter breaker offers several advantages. Primarily, it provides ground fault circuit interruption protection, which is critical for safety without needing a neutral conductor. Secondly, it helps in meeting the requirements of the National Electrical Code, or NEC, for ground fault circuit interrupter protection in certain applications where a neutral is not present. Thirdly, utilizing this approach can lead to cost savings, as it eliminates the necessity for a separate ground fault circuit interrupter receptacle or any other distinct ground fault circuit interrupter device. In summary, the ground fault circuit interrupter breaker monitors the balance of current between the hot wires and trips if there is an imbalance indicating current leakage to ground. Even without to neutral, the ground wire serves as the reference for detecting such imbalances, ensuring protection. Let's further explore ground fault circuit interrupter protection. Ground fault circuit interrupters, or GFCIs, are designed to protect individuals from electrical shock. They work by monitoring the current flowing in a circuit. Under normal circumstances, the current flowing through the hot conductor should equal the current returning through the neutral conductor. A ground fault occurs when some of the current leaks to ground, meaning that the current returning through the neutral is less than the current flowing through the hot conductor. The ground fault circuit interrupter detects this difference and quickly trips the circuit, cutting off the power and preventing the electrical shock. The threshold for tripping is very low, typically around 5 milliamps, which is much less than the amount of current needed to cause serious harm. Ground fault circuit interrupters are required in areas where there is a high risk of electrical shock, such as bathrooms, kitchens, and outdoor locations. There are two main types of ground fault circuit interrupters, receptacles, and circuit breakers. Ground fault circuit interrupter receptacles are installed in place of standard electrical outlets, while ground fault circuit interrupter circuit breakers are installed in the electrical panel and protect the entire circuit. Now, let's delve more deeply into the wiring and the NEC compliance aspect of the setup. When wiring a 208 volt circuit with a two-pole ground fault circuit interrupter breaker and no neutral, it's essential to follow specific guidelines to ensure safety and code compliance. The NEC provides detailed requirements for ground fault circuit interrupter protection in Article 210.8, which specifies where ground fault circuit interrupter protection is required. For example, Ground fault circuit interrupter protection is typically required for receptacles installed in readily accessible outdoor locations, bathrooms, kitchens, and other areas where there is a high risk of exposure to moisture or water. When installing the two-pole ground fault circuit interrupter breaker, connect the two hot conductors to the terminals labeled for the line side. These terminals are usually marked with an L or have a specific designation indicating the line connection. The ground conductor should be connected to the ground terminal, which is typically marked with a ground symbol. It's crucial to ensure that all connections are tight and secure to prevent arcing and overheating. 
One of the key considerations when using a two-pole ground fault circuit interrupter breaker with at the neutral is the proper functioning of the ground fault detection mechanism. The ground fault circuit interrupter relies on sensing the imbalance between the current flowing in the hot conductors and the current returning through the neutral conductor. However, in a 208 volt circuit without a neutral, the ground fault circuit interrupter uses the ground conductor as a reference point for detecting any leakage current. If there is a ground fault, some of the current will flow through the ground conductor, creating an imbalance that the ground fault circuit interrupter detects, causing it to trip. It is very important to properly test the ground fault circuit interrupter breaker after installation to ensure that it is functioning correctly. This can be done by using a ground fault circuit interrupter tester, which simulates a ground fault condition and verifies that the breaker trips as expected. If the ground fault circuit interrupter does not trip when tested, it may be defective and should be replaced immediately. Additionally, it's crucial to label the receptacle as ground fault circuit interrupter protected to inform users that the outlet is equipped with ground fault circuit interrupter protection. This helps to prevent accidental shocks and encourages the use of ground fault circuit interrupter protection in areas where it is required. In addition to the NEC requirements, local codes and regulations may also apply. It is important to consult with a qualified electrician or local building official to ensure that the installation meets all applicable codes and standards. Failure to comply with these requirements can result in fines, penalties and potential safety hazards. Finally, it's important to note that ground fault circuit interrupters are not a substitute for proper grounding. Grounding provides a low impedance path for fault current to return to the source, helping to prevent voltage buildup and reduce the risk of electrical shock. All electrical systems should be properly grounded in accordance with the NEC and local codes. Let's further discuss the specific components involved in this installation. The two-pole ground fault circuit interrupter breaker is a specialized type of circuit breaker that combines the functions of a standard circuit breaker with ground fault protection. It is designed to protect against both overloads and short circuits, as well as ground faults. The breaker has two poles, each of which connects to one of the hot conductors in the 208 volt circuit. When a ground fault is detected, the breaker trips, interrupting the current flow in both hot conductors. The ground fault circuit interrupter mechanism in the breaker works by monitoring the current balance between the two hot conductors. If there is a significant difference in current, it indicates that some of the current is leaking to ground, triggering the breaker to trip. The ground fault circuit interrupter breaker also includes a test button that allows you to verify that the ground fault protection is functioning correctly. When the test button is pressed, it simulates a ground fault condition causing the breaker to trip if it is working properly. The receptacle used in this installation should be a grounding type receptacle, which means that it has a third terminal for connecting the ground conductor. The ground conductor provides a path for fault current to return to the source, helping to protect against electrical shock. The receptacle should be rated for 208 volts and should be compatible with the type of plug being used. It is also important to choose a receptacle that is suitable for the environment in which it will be installed. For example, if the receptacle is located outdoors, it should be weather resistant and protected from moisture. When installing the receptacle, make sure to connect the hot conductors to the appropriate terminals, which are usually marked with an L or have a specific designation indicating the line connection. The ground conductor should be connected to the ground terminal, which is typically marked with the ground symbol. All connections should be tight and secure to prevent arcing and overheating. In addition to the breaker and receptacle, you may also need other components such as wire connectors, conduit, and mounting hardware. These components should be chosen based on the specific requirements of the installation and should comply with all applicable codes and standards. Let's also touch on troubleshooting potential issues. After installing the two-pole ground fault circuit interrupt to breaker and receptacle, it's important to test the installation to ensure that it is working correctly. If the breaker trips frequently or if the receptacle does not provide power, there may be an issue that needs to be addressed. One common issue is a ground fault in the wiring. This can be caused by damaged installation, loose connections or other factors. To troubleshoot a ground fault, 
you can use a multimeter to measure the resistance between the hot conductors and the ground conductor. If there is a low resistance reading, it indicates that there is a ground fault. Another potential issue is a faulty ground fault circuit interrupter breaker. If the breaker does not trip when the test button is pressed, it may be defective and should be replaced. It's also possible that the receptacle itself is faulty. If the receptacle does not provide power or if it feels loose or damaged, it should be replaced. When troubleshooting electrical issues, it's important to take safety precautions to avoid electrical shock. Always turn off the power to the circuit before working on any electrical components. Use insulated tools and wear appropriate personal protective equipment, such as gloves and safety glasses. If you are not comfortable working with electricity, it's best to hire a qualified electrician to perform the troubleshooting and repairs. Let's address some common questions. Firstly, can I use a standard circuit breaker instead of a ground fault circuit interrupter breaker in this application? The answer is no, ground fault circuit interrupter protection is required by code in certain locations such as outdoor receptacles and receptacles in bathrooms and kitchens. Using a standard circuit breaker in these locations would not provide adequate protection against electrical shock. Secondly, can I connect the neutral conductor to the ground terminal on the receptacle? The answer is no, connecting the neutral conductor to the ground terminal is a violation of the NEC and can create a dangerous situation. The neutral conductor and the ground conductor are separate conductors that serve different purposes. Thirdly, what happens if the ground fault circuit interrupter breaker trips frequently? If the ground fault circuit interrupter breaker trips frequently, it indicates that there is a ground fault in the circuit. The cause of the ground fault should be identified and corrected before the breaker is reset. Fourthly, can I use an extension cord with the ground fault circuit interrupter receptacle? Yes. You can use an extension cord with a ground fault circuit interrupter receptacle, but it's important to choose an extension cord that is rated for outdoor use and is in good condition. The extension cord should also be properly grounded. Fifthly, how often should I test the ground fault circuit interrupter breaker? The ground fault circuit interrupter breaker should be tested monthly to ensure that it is functioning correctly. This can be done by pressing the test button on the breaker. Finally, let's summarize the key points. Using a two-pole ground fault circuit interrupter breaker for a 208 volts receptacle with a neutral is a safe and code compliant way to provide ground fault protection. The ground fault circuit interrupter breaker works by monitoring the current balance between the hot conductors and tripping if there is a leakage current to ground. The installation should be performed by a qualified electrician and should comply with all applicable codes and standards. Regular testing of the ground fault circuit interrupter breaker is essential to ensure that it is functioning correctly and providing adequate protection against electrical shock. Remember that electrical work can be dangerous and it's always best to consult with a qualified electrician if you have any questions or concerns. By following these guidelines, you can ensure that your electrical system is safe and reliable.